This question is question 23 of the Edexcel June 2012 paper 1 and it involves algebraic fractions. Right, so if we have a look at part A, it says simplify fully and what we have here is we have an algebraic fraction because the numerator and the denominator consists of algebraic terms. You've got an x squared, a 3x, a 2x squared and a minus 5x. So this is called an algebraic fraction. Okay, the best way to approach this type of question here is to always factorize this expression here, the, the x squared expression first, or the, the easier um, quadratic expression. Because what this will do is it'll give you a big clue on factorizing the case where the coefficient of x squared is greater than one. So when you factorize the top, it will you know give you a big clue on how to factorize the bottom because one of those brackets will be identical it will be the same as one of the brackets on the bottom because if you if you were to factorize the top and the bottom and it didn't it didn't actually cancel in the end i mean the question would be a bit pointless i mean there's no point factorizing the top and the bottom if it doesn't eventually cancel so what you would expect is one of those brackets on the top will be identical to um, one of the brackets on the bottom. Okay, so let's go ahead and factorize the expression on the top. Okay, so as a higher tier student, you should know how to do this. Okay, so what you're doing is you're looking for two numbers that multiply to give you uh, minus four and add or subtract to give you this plus three, this constant in front of the x term. So, okay, you know, if you go by the, the four method, as it's in x squared, you know it will be set out in this form. So you're gonna have an, an x here, and you're going to have an x here, because if you think about the firsts in the four method, x times x is equal to x squared. So you know it's going to be in this form. Right, so you just got to think about those two numbers that multiply to give you minus 4 and add or subtract to give you plus 3, which is the constant in front of that x term. Okay, as this is a, a minus, a minus 4, what that means is one of these brackets has to be a positive and the other one has to be a negative. So I could put a plus in there and I can put a minus in there. Okay, the reason why one of these has to be a plus and the other one has to be a minus is because... Well, if you think about the four method, if you think about the last two terms, so whatever number is in here, whatever term is here, and whatever term is here, to get a, a negative term in the end, so when you multiply these two terms, to get a negative answer, one of those terms has to be a plus, and the other one has to be a minus, because when the two signs alternate, when there's a plus and a minus, um, that gives you a minus number. Okay, so if you have a look at this, there's only two combinations. You can either have a 2 and a 2 in there, or you could have a 4 and a 1. Okay, if you have a 2 and a 2, the problem with 2 and a 2 is they don't add or subtract to give you 3. But a 4 and a 1 does, because 4 minus 1 is equal to 3. And that is our the constant in front of the x term. So that means one of the brackets has to be um, a plus 4 and the other one has to be a minus 1. So a, a 4 would go here because it has to be a plus 4 and a minus 1 would go there. So what you can do is you can actually expand this out just to check that it indeed gives you x squared plus 3x minus 4. Okay, so that's the the top bit factorize now we just need to focus on the, the denominator okay so as I was saying before one of these brackets will be identical to one of the brackets at the bottom okay so if you have a look at this quadratic expression at the bottom uh, we have well if you look at the constant in front of the x squared it's a 2 um, it's prime which means it has to be in this form we're going to have a 2x here as it is prime, we're going to have a 2x there and we're going to have an x there. Because again, if you think about the first in the 4 method, 2x multiplied by x gives you this, this first term, this 2x squared. 
Okay, so it has to be in this form. Okay, and as this is positive here, this is a plus three. Think about the C term, it's a, it's a plus three. That means the signs of the brackets has to be both plus or both minus because again, if you had a plus and a plus there, um, if you multiply those two last terms, it gives you a plus, two uh, plus signs, it's quite obvious. Even if you have two minus signs in there, remember a minus and a minus, if you think about the sign rules, gives you um, a plus as well. Two minuses make a plus. Okay, so as I was saying before, one of these brackets is going to be identical to one of the brackets at the bottom. So it looks like it's going to be this bracket here. So this bracket has to be either a minus one or a plus four because 2x doesn't match any of these two forms. So what you have to do is you have to have a little think about it. Um, again, what you're looking for is, well, what you need to do is you need to play around with the combinations. So you have to think about the outsides and the insides in the for method. So, because remember that you can't put that, um, you can't put these numbers anyway. You have to have a, a little think about it. So if we have a plus three here, well, if you think about the the terms, these last two terms here, they have to multiply to give you uh, three. That's that's another fact. So, as three is also prime, that means that the only two numbers that could go in there is three and one. Okay. So, and another um, fact is, as I was saying before, is the one of these brackets has to be identical to the bracket at the bottom. So. I mean, the only possibility it could be is this has to be a minus one there. I mean, it can't be um, a plus four because remember, you know, both of these numbers, these numbers has to be a one and a three. So the only possibility this could be is a minus one. So that's X minus one. Okay, so what that leaves us with, and I was saying before, both of these signs have to be plus or they both have to be minus. So as we know, this is a minus one, this has to be a minus. And this also has to be a minus three. Okay, so this is our factorized form. And again, what you can do is you can expand this out uh, just to double check that you get um, this expression at the bottom. And as I was saying before, because these two brackets are identical, uh, we can cancel these two out because they're the same um, number they're fact effectively the same value remember think of these as values remember all these are these two brackets are, are just two numbers you know this could be um, an eight here and once you know what x is this could be an eight and you know this could be a three for example so these are just numbers so if these two numbers are the same or values are the same then they are going to cancel out and that leaves us with just x plus four over two x minus three so that's our answer there so don't forget to put this answer on the the dotted line here so just keep that in mind whenever you're factorizing an algebraic fraction remember to factorize the easier case first factorize that first and then use that um well to factorize the bottom because as i said before one of the brackets is going to be identical to the bracket at the bottom Otherwise, it will not cancel. So there is no point in factorizing both expressions if they're not, you know, eventually going to cancel. I mean, the whole thing, I mean, by just, if you just factorize it, you haven't actually simplified it fully. The only way you can simplify it fully is if these two brackets cancel here. Okay, so let's move on to part B as well. Okay, so part B says, write four over x plus two plus three over x minus two as a single fraction in its simplest form. Right, okay, so what we need to do, okay, if you think about the the basic examples, when we're adding two fractions, what we need to do is we need to make these two denominators the same, or we need to find a common denominator. So remember, a quick way to find a common denominator, if these were just normal values, you know, suppose this was a three and this was a five, to find a common denominator, you just have to multiply the two because those two numbers will go into um, the number. Well, when you multiply those two numbers, both of those, both of these individual numbers will go into that. So, a common, well, a common multiple of these two would just be x plus two. We just have to multiply the two. So x plus two 
multiplied by x minus 2. Remember, we don't know what these numbers are, so we leave them in terms of x. So obviously, x plus 2 multiplied by x minus 2 is, well, that's the a common multiple if you multiply those two numbers. So the, what that means is we have to put both of these fractions over x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay, so let's just put both of those fractions over that. So x plus 2, x plus 2, and x minus 2. Okay, so we're adding the two fractions. So we're adding, put a plus there. And remember the denominators, well the aim is to make the denominators the same. So that's why both of these are the same, x plus 2 and x minus 2. Okay. Right, so if you think about, well when we found, once we found the common denominator, what we do is we go back to these original fractions and we think about, you know, we think about equivalent fractions. So how did we make this x plus 2? Um, an x plus 2 and x minus 2. Well, we had to multiply it by x minus 2, didn't we? So we need to multiply the top by x minus 2 as well. So we do 4 multiplied by x minus 2. Remember, to find an equivalent fraction, what you're doing is you're multiplying by the top and the bottom by the same number. So we're multiplying the top and the bottom by x minus 2 in the first fraction. Okay, in the second fraction, what we did is we multiply the x minus 2 by x plus 2. So we do the same at the top, we're multiplying the 3 by the x plus 2. Okay, so what we can do at this point is we can combine the two fractions because both of these fractions have the same denominator. So we can combine them into a single fraction. Okay, just before I do that, what I want to do is I want to talk about this denominator here because this is an example of a difference of two squares. Because if you think about the difference of two squares formula, it's like this. So we have a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b. a plus b and a minus b. Remember this is a rule. So a squared minus b squared is equal to a plus b in brackets and then a minus b. So this is an example of a difference of two squares because if you compare it with this rule here, a is x in this case and b is equal to 2. So what this becomes, if you were to I mean, you can even expand it out as well, but when you, once you expand it and simplify it, what you'll get is you'll just simply get this. So if we were to combine the two fractions, we multiplied out the bottom. What that will simplify to is if a is x and b is 2, we would have x squared, a squared or x squared, and minus 2 squared, 2 squared, which is just uh, 4. Okay, so that's the bottom. Okay, so combining the top now, what we're going to have is we're going to have this. So I'm just going to expand this out first. So if we expand this out, what we're going to have is we're going to have 4x minus 8. So that comes from the first fraction. And then we have plus 3x plus 6. So if you expand this up, remember when you're expanding you're just multiplying the term on the outside with each term on the inside. So as this is all positive, um, we don't need to leave it in brackets when we combine the two because this is all positive. We just have a plus 3x and then plus a 6. Okay, so now that we have that, we can simplify the top. So we can simplify the x term. So we have a 4x and we have a, have a plus 3x. So remember the sign is key here. The sign is attached to the term. So we have a positive 4x. I know it hasn't got a plus there, but this is positive. And we have a plus 3x. So we have 4x plus 3x, which is 7x. And then we have a minus 8. So be careful here because this is actually a minus 8. We have a minus 8 multiplied by, sorry, um, add 6. 
uh, which is well minus 8 add 6 is minus 2 so that gives you that and on the bottom we just have as before x squared minus 4 so that hasn't changed so that is the final answer to this question so don't forget to put your answer on the on the dotted line but again it follows the same principles as as the foundation tier so when you're adding fractions and the denominator is a different so here obviously the denominator is a different you have to find the common denominator and as these we don't actually know what these numbers are well if you think back to the basic examples and from the foundation tier a quick way to find a common multiple is just to multiply these two numbers so when you multiply these two numbers here x plus 2 x minus 2 that is a common multiple because x plus 2 goes into that and x minus 2 will go into that as well and this is of course an example of a difference of two squares I mean you don't necessarily have to expand it out but it's just worth knowing that anyway for um, different questions involving um, algebraic fractions so that is the final answer to that question